This past week, the corn markets crashed on China quashing the rumor it had bought U.S. corn. Joining me now is This Week in Louisiana Agriculture's Neil Malasson with The Bottom Line. And Neil, it's amazing what rumors can do, but from what I understand, this was more than just one cargo load of corn. It was, Avery. It was more than just one cargo of corn. It's about manipulation of the markets to buy commodities for lower prices. It's almost a parable of caution when dealing with the markets, especially when speculators are involved. You see, markets are ideally driven by fundamental forces, meaning that the price of corn or other commodities are pretty close to the actual value of it. However, speculators when they enter the market are there to make money, not move commodities. Anything they can do to make money is going to happen, which is why you get the wild fluctuations in a given year, rather than a steady growth or decline. For instance, last week, the wheat markets crashed based on a forecast of a half an inch of rain in the Midwest that was at that time a week away. Jumping on any little bit of news like that, rather than looking at what is actually going on, is part of the reality we face right now. That that brings us back to China. China stores up corn and other grains in a strategic reserve so that they have plenty of food on hand to quell any domestic disturbances. Not only are there some of those long-term stocks getting too old to use, but corn usage in China is going up as feed stock as the country is getting more protein in their diet. On top of that, the communists fear unrest in the Mideast might spread to their country, so they're making sure they have plenty of corn on hand. As the U.S. has one one of the few countries with a big corn supply, it's been highly anticipated that they would be buying about 10% or more of corn than last year, so it was no surprise when the news broke that China would ease restrictions on GMO corn and buy a shipment to be sent there. The problem is, the price for corn has been on an upward trend, almost $10 a bushel for U.S. corn in China from the Gulf of Mexico. What happened, though, is that China turned around and said they were not buying that corn, and subsequently, the price for corn dropped dramatically, making it more attractive to buy, especially since almost a dollar of that price is in taxes for the Chinese government. They were considering lowering or dropping the VAT tax in order to help ease the cost of food. So not only does this help them buy corn, but it helps them buy time until the South American crop starts to roll in and increasing supply, furthering lower prices. Speaking of supply, the USDA Prospective Plantings Report comes out this week, Avery, and I'll have full coverage of what the USDA thinks farmers will plant this season on the next bottom line. And I know that that's a report that's really important to both farmers and marketers. Thank you a lot, Neil Malasson. And remember, you can listen to Neil's reports on the Louisiana Farm Bureau Radio Network for a list of stations or to listen to his reports online. You can click over to our website, twilatv.org, and look for the link called LFB Radio Network on the left side of the homepage. Well, that does it for this edition of This Week in Louisiana Agriculture. Next week, we'll bring you an encore edition of Twila, but in two weeks, I'll begin a two-part series on the LSU Ag Center's Calf to Carcass Tour and tell you why it almost didn't happen. Until then, you can watch any of our stories online. Just click over to our website, twilatv.org. For all of us here on the Twila team, I'm Avery Davidson. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you right here again next week.